amen. Well, if you plant some corn seed, you will harvest. It's not a trick question, church. There it is. I love corn. If you plant uh, wheat seed, I'm not a farmer, so I'm just, just stay with me. Real. If you plant wheat seed, you're gonna eventually, you're gonna get wheat. I know y'all, you guys are like mesmerized by all this wisdom. <laughs> if you plant tomato seed, you'll eventually tomatoes. reap tomatoes. Now, what I've found, and I'm learning this, I'm actually reading this book by Craig Rochelle, The Power to Change, and he says so many of us, here, here's the thing, we plant corn seed, but many times we expect a tomato. We're planting wheat, but we're expecting corn. What am I, what am I, what am I getting at? I think sometimes in our personal lives, we have this tendency to, to act in a certain way, to live in a certain way, but expect a different result. He says this, uh, you'll harvest what you plant, your outcomes will be determined by your inputs. Check this out, the results of your life and my life will be based on the decisions you make, the habits you stake, and the habits you break. We, we plant seeds of lust, but expect a good marriage. We plant seeds of criticism and negativity and still expect to have good friends. We plant seeds of showing up late and unprepared, but we want a promotion. We plant something, and yet we expect something else. And the wild thing is, and then when it, when it doesn't go our way, we blame God, yeah. not ourselves. He said, this is my favorite quote of the entire book. If, pick it up, by the way. It's such a fantastic book. So grateful for Craig and Amy and their faithfulness. The, my favorite quote of the whole book, he said, um, it's not punishment, it's a harvest. It's, it's just simply a harvest. And so when I was studying Proverbs, and this is what got me, I'm like, I'm planning certain things in my life, but expecting a different result. And then I start reading Proverbs, and I'm like, yep, miss that. Yep, miss that. <laughs> yep, miss that. And now I'm expecting something different. And so this book is gonna be so healthy for us if we'll just lean in, humble ourselves, we're teachable with it. And let me just say this. This is not based on salvation. Let me, just, let me just get this out right away as a preacher, okay? It's, it's not if I do this real, real good, then I'm gonna make it to heaven. Listen, you are saved by grace through faith alone, not by works, lest anyone should boast, and we would boast, okay? So that's good. Someone say good news. Okay, that's all good news. Now, now the practicality, though, of life, we have certain habits and certain things that we sow we will reap the result of what we sow. It's just, that's just, it's a natural law that God put in life that we can't escape. So I just, I just wanna get that out. So no condemnation through this teaching. It, it, in fact, um, I'll be the first to admit as I'm reading, and I'm gonna give you these, I miss on every single one of them, all five. But the beauty is, if we humble ourselves, we're like, yeah, that's off, that's off. Guess what, now God's got something cooking. The minute you're like, don't tell me what to say. Pre don't tell me what to do, preacher. Don't tell me what to do, God. That is a tough position to be in. So let me just give you number one. It's Proverbs 3, starting in verse one. Here's what it says. My child, my children. Remember, this is Solomon talking to his, his kids. And really, it's God speaking to his kids, you and I. My child, never forget the things I've taught you. Store my commands in your in your heart, if, here it is, here it is, if you do this, everybody say if, yes. see that's the big one, if you do this, you will live many years <laughs> and your life will be satisfying. I always, when I read the Bible, I think of Spock when I think of this, like 
live long and prosper. We're my Star Trek nerds, okay? Got three of them in here, awesome. I was just thinking like, when I was reading this verse, I'm like, okay, and I just, you can write in your notes, longevity and satisfaction. Isn't that what we want in life? Like no one wants to just like depart the earth like really quick. You know, my goal in life is to just get out of this planet as quick as I can. And no one wants to live like a, like a dull, like not satisfying life. No one does. So, so here it is. Right here, right from the jump, he's like, yo, I got the key to, to longevity and satisfaction. Here it is right here. Everything I've taught you, store those commands in your heart. That's why we're weirdos about self-feeding here. When I say self-feeding, what does that mean? Reading your own Bible. Because why? Everything, all of God's like commands and his, like what works is right here in your Bible. That's why we're weird about that. My, my, I always honor my wife because I was thinking through this and I'm like, man, she did such a marvelous job of training our children. Our kids are 21 years old. It's just so wild to think about. And, but for years, she would homeschool, and then they did private school, and then we sent them as missionaries into the public school. But the whole key to success for our children to this day is this woman's ability and availability to let the word of God from her heart into our children's heart. That is it. That, that, that is honestly, and now again, she's not perfect. She's close, but not perfect. And let me just say this, and I'm gonna just speak to just young moms right now. Can I just tell you, consistency in sharing the word of God with your children from the womb to the tomb, that will be the key to their satisfaction and their long life. Now, now again, this is a principle. This is not like, you're like, well, man, that person was godly and God brought them home early. I understand that. But for the most part, I'm saying th this is a natural law that, that, will, that will preach all day long. Our kids aren't perfect, but I'm going to tell you, man, like my whole goal was that when they could leave the house, they'd want to come home. <laughs> that was it. And last, last week, I think it was last week, I got a text from one of my kids and he just free willingly, on his own will, he just said, hey, I'm just thinking about it. I just want to tell you how grateful I am for you guys and how much I love you. From a 21-year-old, like, buff, like, swole dude, like, mean guy, ah, like, I'm just like, okay, that's, that's hashtag goals. Anybody want, if you're a mom in here when your kid's 21, do you want them to text you and say, I was just thinking about you and how grateful I am for you? That's, that's dude, what? Rich and satisfying. John 10, 10, we talk about this all the time. This, this is the key to the church, man. The thief came to what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. But what did Jesus say? I came to give what? <laughs> life. What? What kind of life, by the way? A rich, abundant, a satisfying life. I always thought the opposite. I always thought God came to throw salt in my game. I'm talking about like, if you let Christ in your life, he is just gonna, man, he's, he is Debbie Downer from heaven. It's quite the opposite. And here's the thing. I've had some fun sin seasons of my life, and they're real fun. But guess what? You pay later on. You do. You go, man, sin isn't fun. You haven't done it right. Sin is fun, but the consequences later on will kill you. So, so much to that. Number two, you ready for number two? I told you this was going to be turbo teaching today. Turbo teaching. Look at number two. Favor and reputation. Favor and reputation. Proverbs 3, verse 3. Never, oh, this is so good. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your isn't it interesting how we keep on seeing the heart? Then, this, that would jump, to, so if then, right? If I plant this, I will reap this. If I'm walking in loyalty and kindness, then, then you will, I will find what? Favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good, oh, it's so good. Okay, this is where it gets real practical. Let me ask you a question. Are you a loyal person? 
Am I a loyal person? Or are you more the kind of person that when things get tough, you bounce, or when things look a little shinier down the road, you bounce and take off and you go to that? Can I just get in your, I'm just trying to be real real quick. Let me ask you this. Do you just hop in the transfer portal when you don't get the starting job? We, we live in a wild culture right now. We, we want the stage, man, without getting behind the scenes and serving, without anyone knowing your name. Loyalty. I can hang on that for a while, but let me go to kindness. <laughs> oh, man, I could preach on this for a moment. Like, nothing worse than a crusty Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, oh, <laughs> life's hard. Show, no, here, here, here's some real practical. Okay, all y'all are going to go to brunch or something after, okay? Whether it's home or somewhere else. Y'all are gonna, how many are going to eat after this teaching? Just, okay, so watch this. I'm gonna just help you out. When you go, you look at the server in the eyes, know the color of their eyes, okay? And humbly and graciously ask for that omelet in a polite way. Here's what I see, Kristen. Uh, yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the uh, sausage and cheese. Give me, no, no, here it is. Give me the sausage and cheese. Uh, hash browns, extra crispy, and uh, bagel. Make sure that's crispy, too. Okay, hold on. Um, man, how's, how's your day going? Would, um, can I please have that sausage? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that sausage and omelet, a sausage and cheese omelet, please, and crispy bacon, that'd be great, please. Thanks so much. I know that sounds so dumb. Where are my servers at, by the way? Raise your hand, okay? I mean, what, there's, is that real? That's real. Listen, it's, it's so wild, and I get a little legalistic about this. I'm sorry. We train our kids. We train our staff. If, if our staff is requesting something from one another, and they don't use please and thank you, they get wall squats. <laughs> Push-ups, wall squats. And I hope you don't take that as legalistic, but what, I, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to build in a, a culture of Christianity that's kind. You know, you can maybe win your lost neighbor by bringing them cookies with a smile more than telling them that they're going to hell because they're living with their girlfriend. Now that's, well, it's not, there's, a, there's an approach, okay? It's just, what, what I'm trying to say is there's something about kindness and, and humility and tact. One of my friends that I was, <laughs> I love this guy. Every time I'm with him, I just see God growing him and, uh, he had this pretty tough place that he was at leading in his company, and he had an opportunity. He got wrong pretty bad, and he could have just unleashed on this person, but God like, is changing him so much by God's spirit. As he, he looked, and he was so kind and humble and gracious with him. Thank you for your faithfulness. We're going to part ways, but it's so beautiful. And man, be, and, and I believe this, because of that growth and response, like right when the other person was, this was a significant role in the company, right as that person was, the day, two weeks, the day that the person was leaving, God brings the perfect candidate, just brings them right up on the front door and, and just goes, here you go. Here's, the, here's a way better candidate than the person that left that wronged you. I'm just like, favor. So we were together. I was like, bro, you just preached my sermon. There it is right there. What was it? Kindness, loyalty, favor of God, favor of man. You know those people that just seems like just favor in their life? Watch it. Most often, you're going to see favor connected to kindness, humility. You're going to see it. Loyalty, they stick with it. I, I was thinking of uh, Joe, big Joe in the Bible, Joseph. You ever just read Joseph's life and you're like, I would have tapped a long time ago. His brothers hated him. He got sold into slavery. He's working for, you know, Potiphar. And Potiphar's wife, Hotiphar, comes on to him, falsely accuses him. And uh, then he gets thrown in another prison. And every time, man, what does he do? He's just loyal to the task. He's a servant. And all of a sudden, over time, 
time. We're talking a long time. What does it do? God exalts him to the place of second in command of the entire world. What was it? Loyalty. It's loyalty. I got people like, dude, my boss like is bad or this or that, and they just bounce. You know, go read Joseph's life. He served with humility. I serve with humility. Okay, ready for number three? We gotta be quick. Clarity and vision. And you guys, this is one of the verses we've talked about. You've heard a million times. Watch this, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You guys, you guys probably memorized this one. Ready? Trust in the Lord with all your man. Something about that heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. <laughs> I always depend on my own understanding. Isn't it wild when you have like something you're praying through, you get the list of pros and cons and you like lay on your bed at night and you just go with your own understanding? Or is that just me? Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. How many right now, you have a big decision to make right now in your life? Raise your hand real quick, okay? This is your verse. And again, I'm not poo-pooing list with pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. But I was thinking about it. I think there's a lot of people that are praying about a promotion in another city and they're just looking at the dollars and cents. But could it be the Lord is like, no, I placed you in a great church community. You're built, you're strong, you're healthy, your kids are thriving in Christ. And if you chase a dollar and you leave for the dollar, what about your kids? Now, again, I'm not just, sometimes that's, that's the case, and the Lord, the Lord will direct you in that. I, I wanted to give you some practical things. When I'm praying through key decisions um, in my life, I wanted to just give you, th this is, this is the, it's, there's five things. Number one, I ask for God to confirm it in the word of God. Best, best way to get confirmation on decisions. God speaks to you through his word. Number two, through his spirit. There'll be sometimes I'm like, Worshiping God in the shower, you know, getting clean, and God will just give me a word in the shower to confirm the direction of where I'm going. Number three, good biblical counsel, people you trust that God will speak through. Number four, circumstances. God will open doors and close doors as he sees fit at times. And then finally, number three, there's a peace. There's a peace deep in your heart. And, and, it's weird, I think that's always the final confirmation for me when I'm asking big decisions. That deep peace resonates in my soul and I can move forward. Let me just read this, just, this, this quote by Clark. This is really good. Here's what Clark says. Self-sufficiency and self-dependence have been the ruin of mankind ever since the fall of Adam. Just, sink, just let that sink in real quick. The grand sin of the human race is their continual endeavor to live independently of God. That's, that's totally me at times. Lord, forgive me. I want to just only listen to what you say to do and then obey it. If then, if then, if we don't trust in our own deal, like he's going to direct, okay? If then. Number four, healing and strength. Healing and strength, write that down. Now verse seven, Proverbs three, verse seven. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. <laughs> Isn't it wild if you do anything good, you just, you're really quick to tell someone about it or tweet about it or Instagram about it. It's so wild in the human. Maybe that's just me. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then, everybody say then. So if, 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 if I'm not impressed with my own wisdom, if I'm fearing the Lord, and that's a reverential fear. It's not like I'm, oh, he's gonna get me. It's more, no, man, he's, he is uh, sovereign. He's in control. I'm, I'm worshiping him. I'm fearing the Lord and turning away from evil, okay? If I do that, then guess what? You're gonna have healing for your body and strength for your bones. My problem, prideful, and I'm drawn towards evil, not running away from evil. And so many years in my life, and to this day at times, where I, when my flesh, my own desires get in the way, I'm, I'm drawn back to it, this evil. Isn't it a weird thing? You're like, I know that's not good, and you're drawn to it anyways. Like, it's the worst thing. 
And growing up, God, talk about healing. <laughs> My body needed healing. For whatever reason, I was super prideful and I was always getting into evil. And as a result, God's just like, hey, let me just help you. I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, just get. I'll never forget my freshman year. This is a true story. I'm playing at Iowa State. I'm scrambling. The ball falls out of my hand. I go to grab it. It's, it's some Colorado football player. I just, I still have a vision of it. He's flying in the, real ugly guy. He's flying in the air and he, and he, he literally hits me right here. I'm down and you see the video, you see the video. I'm on my back and my hand's going like completely knocked out, just knocked out cold. I just felt like, it was like God going, bro, you continue to run towards evil and you're so prideful, I'm trying to get your attention. Before my junior year, you're like, stop with the football. I'm just, I'm just, this is my world. I'm just trying to apply the Bible to my life and I don't know how it applies to yours. Before my junior year, first day of training camp, I was out all night doing some bad stuff, running towards evil. And that first day at camp, it was 95 degrees, 90% humidity, had a full body cramp at the end of practice. You ever had a, you ever had a cramp in your like, leg or your, th try having that in every muscle in your body. I mean, it was, first it was my hamstring, I was like, oh no, oh no. Then was my quad, I was like, you know, you know how like you're like, what do I do here? It's, it's going up my body, my abs, oh no. My, my face. <laughs> and, and the trainers didn't like me, so they wouldn't give me like, like an IV to give me relief. So all that night, I was in hell. I was just like drinking gator loads, you know, just. It's like, you want healing in your body? Like, stop like being prideful and being drawn towards evil. Sometimes we're like, oh, the enemy's after me. How about you're just your own enemy at times, and I'm my own enemy at times. Just doing dumb stuff. If this, then but if we, if we fear the Lord and we move away from evil, it's amazing how some of my injuries just started dissipating. Natural laws. Last one. Probably my favorite. I love this. Prosperity and generosity. This is so good. And some people are like, oh, there they go with the prosperity gospel. I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to give you the, the Bible. Y'all ready for the Bible? Look at verse nine. Honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the best part of everything you produce. Then, everybody say then. So if I honor the Lord with the first and best, then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Woo. I wrote in my notes, I'm just gonna tell you, God's got a big barn. He's got a big barn. He, he owns everything. And it's so wild when you learn this concept. It, it, you know, there's such a bad taste in so many people's mouth due to money in the church because people just get all weird about it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna teach you what the Bible says. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth. First of all, it's God that distributed that wealth to you and to me. And, it, and he says, with the, with the best part of it, the first and the best, not the last and the leftovers, the first and the best. We don't tip God, we tithe. We bring the tithe to God. And why is that? It's because we trust him. This is a biblical principle time and time and time again. The Israelites would bring the first fruits of their crops, of their fields. What was it? It was a sign. You know what? This first harvest came in. The first 10%, I'm bringing it to God. What was it? I trust God that you're gonna provide more. That's how it was. The, the first lings of the flocks, you know, they'd have like a little, you know, little, little male animal. They'd bring that in to the Lord. What, what were they? They were saying, I trust you, God, to provide more animals through that animal right there. It's trust. Tithing is trusting. That's bottom line. And it's understanding that God owns everything. And I have the gracious like, privilege of bringing back to him the first 10%. This is so practical. You get a check for a thousand bucks, a hundred goes, boom, it's gone. It's going back to God. And God's gonna bless the 900. It's just how it is. It's been my whole life. I wish I could just, show, I wish I could just share with you what he's done. Let me just, he's got a big barn. 
The last thing, golly, I, this is, ah, this is so good. Go study the Bible and just learn. He, he wants to teach us in this season, if then. Last story, uh, Mike just shared this and I, I asked him permission. So Mike's an early Christian. He learns this principle we, we shared years ago. And Mike was playing in this, uh, this football league called the UFL in Omaha. So wild. And he gets his first paycheck. Now remember, we're college kids scrapping, you know, we're eating pizza every night, ramen noodles, you know, and all of a sudden he gets his first pro, like, football check, and it's like five grand. And to, for, I mean, I know five grand is nothing to some of you, but for, for us, when we first came out, we're, we're like macaroni and cheese, five grand. Ah! You know, like, and, and he learned this principle, and he was, at, he, was this, this, he was at a pivotal point in his life. What do I do? Do I trust God? That's, that's a lot of money. That's, that's, that's 500 bucks that I'm bringing to God at Love Church at the time, Calvary. What do I do? Am I gonna trust God or am I not? Am I gonna trust myself? Am I gonna recognize that it's all God's? The only reason that I had the privilege of playing that game and then getting compensated is because God gave me the ability. He gave me the breath in my lungs and he gave me that opportunity. I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it back to him. I'm gonna trust him. Can I just tell you, by God's grace, he made that decision and I wish I could show you his life right now. I wish I could. I wish I could just show you all that's transpired in the last 10 years in his life. It would blow you away. Why? God's got a big barn. Thanks for leading for that. Jerrica, you guys, you guys are faithful. And God, God just, he's like, ah, so I'm gonna take care of you. Thanks for trusting me. I don't have time to get to it. Malachi chapter three. Just jot it down and go study it yourself. Malachi chapter three. I think it's nine and 10. Eight through 11, something like that. He says, test me. Just test God. Don't take Todd's word for it. Take God's word for it. See if he doesn't blow you away financially and different areas of your life. Okay, last one, Galatians 6, 7. Galatians 6, 7, here's what it says. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God, the natural laws of God. You will always harvest what you plant, always. If you plant a tomato seed, you will reap a tomato seed. Don't expect corn. You will, I will always plant. Excuse me, I will always harvest what I plant. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Such a timely challenge and encouragement for us. And we need your grace. I know for me, so many areas of growth. And so I, I pray that I wouldn't be overwhelmed and shame myself and just tap out. But I pray I would lean in in this season for your glory. I want to grow. Highlight the areas that I'm weak in. Highlight the areas that I'm sowing bad seed. Allow me to plant great seed. And it's not just for my own life and my families, but I want to be a blessing to way more people. I don't want to hinder your work. You got a big barn. You want to bless. Help me not get in the way. And all of our friends here, I pray we'd be a church that's generous, that's gracious, that's kind, that's loyal. We, we have the fear of the Lord where we're putting you first in all areas of our life. And we wanna see a harvest of souls for your glory in Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna,